Hello, in this video I will show you a basic implementation of D3 bar chart. Now, I'm hoping I will get you on a sort of right track on how to accomplish something like that in Blazor. Okay, I'm not going to get into deep uh, into something uh, very specific or very advanced for that matter, but I will get you sort of started with uh, maybe D3 or any other implementation in Blazor, JavaScript library implementation in Blazor. So the goal here is to show you how to create a basic bar chart, nothing else, uh, nothing too much. And I do not really recommend this. Uh, to do with D3. There are libraries that are a bit more simple, but this is a sort of trustworthy one, I guess you could say, and uh, it's one that people do actually use. So let's take a look at the example first. This is the example, nothing fancy. In the index, we have a button, and when the button is clicked, we generate a simple bar chart. Okay, it's quite a large one, this one. Uh, but this is what we generate. Now we can get into Visual Studio and let's take a look at what happens. Now, this is a library. This is a library, JavaScript library, not a C sharp library. So we're not looking at the new get or something like that. We are looking at the script tag in the index.html. Index.html, this is where you place your script tags, right? If you want to learn a bit more about this, uh, how to run scripts and uh, about Blazor in general, take a look at my Blazor course. It's on a good price now and it's an in-depth course. We go from basics to more advanced stuff, basically everything that you really need to know about Blazor and how to use Blazor. So let's see now. We have this uh, script, okay? This is the D3. Uh, the whole library right here, the script, that's all you need to provide, nothing more. And then if we go into the script tag, we have function, okay? So I have a separate function. I'm not using any default function because as you can see, it would be extremely troublesome to do. So there are three stages and you will find many different tutorials on this. Uh, now, I've tried several of those other arrangements and they did not work. They did not work. They were a mess, okay? They did display something, but it wasn't uh, displayed correctly. Now, I did not go into any research as to why, but this arrangement seems to work properly, as you have seen, right? So, we have uh, this constant div, we call it. It doesn't matter what you call it, okay? And then we use d3 create. Now, it's important that you do D3 create, okay? Not just create or something like that. You create a div element, basically, a new div element uh, with some styling, okay? So this is the font that will go into, uh, into those numbers and the alignment for the numbers uh, and uh, the color for the numbers, so the basic stuff. Now, as you can see, it does not really uh, sort of generate much. It just generates, I guess, the basic idea of the chart. Uh, other than that, you have to deal with uh, just regular styles of div. So it's not the best thing in the world, but uh, it does do the job and it makes your life a bit easier. It's probably quicker and better than do it all yourself. Okay, so we create a div, okay? We, we create a div and into this div will go the data, okay? The bars, okay? The data and the bars. So once you have the div, you need to do select all, as you can see right here. We have select all, we select divs, and uh, then we basically generate that, okay? Generate the whole, a chart, if you will, into the div, okay? Now, there are a few things um, to look at here, but first let's go through the whole arrangement, and I'll explain the data that goes into that. And basically what happens is it generates uh, the display into this div, okay? It generates into that, and then that we assign to the div display, okay? We assign that to the div display. The div display will be in the index.razor where we can't have any JavaScript, okay? So this is our div display 
and this is where the whole chart goes into. Quite a simple arrangement, nothing, nothing too much going on here, but uh, you can see we have background red. As you have seen, the chart was red and this is where you would set that. We have padding and margin that doesn't do too much, okay? Just gives you a little padding and a little margin, nothing uh, extreme. The sort of more important thing here is the width, okay? Now, this is important because of the way it is arranged. So basically, D is the value, the value of uh, where our value you provide, okay? We have data, which is an array, okay? An array of numbers. And so that number gets multiplied and, and for each bar, that will be the number of pixels and it's multiplied by a hundred in this case. Now you can easily do say 10 like that and it will become smaller. So whichever size you prefer, whatever you wanna do, uh, this is the basically the original number and then multiplied by that, it makes up a bar. Again, it's a very primitive arrangement. It, it could be, in my opinion, a bit more of a library -ish kind of an arrangement. Uh, uh, basically, what you're doing, you're, you're building a div with a few uh, with a few pieces in it, uh, sort of almost manually. It's, it is automatic, so so they say, but uh, it's almost manual. Uh, they just generate uh, a few things, and that's it. But at least you have uh, some way to customize your stuff. Okay. So again, we have div. We do it all with it. And then we append child. We take note from the div, okay? You append child with a node. And then you have it, that's it. Okay, now let's take a look at how it goes through Blazor. It's quite simple. We have uh, IGS runtime, and then we have uh, right here our test button, and then we simply invoke the function in JavaScript, and that's it. We also have to provide a piece of data. That would be an array, okay? You have to have an array of numbers, however many you want, and it will generate from that array of numbers, just like that. Obviously, it would come from a different place. Probably it would come from an API somewhere, and you can do this stuff on the server-side blazer as well. Uh, it's all quite fine, but you do provide an array. You execute that function, and you get your charts generated. That's all that there is to it, pretty, pretty much. Now, if you want to learn more about Blazor, as I mentioned previously, take a look at my Blazor course. Also, take a look at my Stripe implementation in Blazor course. You will learn how to implement Stripe checkout in Blazor and also Stripe checkout for subscriptions in Blazor. Quite a useful thing to know and not too difficult to do. It's one of the easier platforms to actually use. Also, subscribe to this channel and look forward for more videos.